from the Tribune News Network. This is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. A rush of people seeking to register to vote on Monday forced parliamentary registration department centers to extend satellite office hours to accommodate the surge. Minister of National Security Marvin Dames yesterday urged eligible Bahamian voters to remain calm and relaxed until the next general election is called, insisting people should not give in to individuals panicking members of the public, as only the prime minister knows the election date. Several registration centers were inundated with people on Monday seeking to get registered and make constituency transfers ahead of the next general election. Many Bahamians who queued on the long lines told the Tribune their decision to visit the centers was influenced by progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis's recent call for people to get registered as soon as possible. Mr. Davis made the plea to Bahamians on Sunday after telling reporters he expects Dr. Minnis to dissolve Parliament and announce an early election as soon as this week, an assertion that has since been brushed off by the Prime Minister. Health Minister Renwood Wells said yesterday the spike in COVID-19 cases can be attributed to Independence Day festivities. His comment came after the country recorded 100 COVID-19 cases on Saturday, the most in a single day since October. Yesterday, officials said there were 95 new COVID-19 cases and more than 90 people are hospitalized. Health officials confirmed an additional 38 cases on Sunday and 81 more cases on Monday. The uptick in cases comes as officials seek to arrest the third wave of the pandemic. The health minister has said since the country entered its third wave of infections, virus cases have fluctuated. John Pinder, the Free National Movement's candidate for Fox Hill, yesterday officially retired from his post as director of the Department of Labor. In an interview with the Tribune, Mr. Pinder said with his retirement now effective, he will launch a full-time campaign in the constituency. Meanwhile, he expressed confidence of a victory over Senator Fred Mitchell of the Progressive Liberal Party for the seat. Mr. Pinder was among the final four candidates of the FNM to be ratified last Thursday. With just under a year to the completion of the Cable Beach development, Paul Wynn is challenging the government to put one of its dilapidated buildings out to tender to remove the eyesore from the area of his investment. Mr. Wynn, a developer of Goldwyn, a hotel and condominium development in Cable Beach, just opposite the office of the Prime Minister, recently learned his company's offer to purchase La Playa has been turned down. La Playa is a dilapidated mansion situated beside Goodman's Bay. It was actually purchased by the National Insurance Board for $3.5 $3.5 million on behalf of the Christie administration for a prime minister's residence. La Playa sat in a state of disrepair for almost 15 years. Mr. Wynn's offer on the house was some $2.25 million. This offer, he says, has been turned down. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news... House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today rejected two Republicans tapped by House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy to sit on a committee investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection, a decision McCarthy denounced as an egregious abuse of power. McCarthy said the GOP won't participate in the investigation if Democrats won't accept the members he appointed. Pelosi cited the integrity of the probe in refusing to accept the appointments of Indiana Representative Jim Banks, picked by McCarthy to be the top Republican on the panel, or Ohio. Ohio Representative Jim Jordan. Both are close allies of former President Donald Trump, whose supporters laid siege to the Capitol that day. Germany's cabinet today approved a roughly 400 million euro or $472 million package of immediate aid for flood victims and vowed to start quickly on rebuilding devastated areas, a task whose cost is expected to be well into the billions. Finance Minister Olaf Scholz said the package financed half by Chancellor Angela Merkel's federal government and half by Germany's state governments to help people deal with the immediate aftermath of last week's flooding would increase if more money is needed. The Tribune's AccuWeather update, a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure ridge will generate moderate to fresh winds across the Bahamas today, while tropical moisture streams across the northwestern islands. Mariners should be alert for possible water spot activity during heavy showers and thunderstorms. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the possible rip currents along east and easterly beaches. Residents are urged to remain hydrated and be alert for signs of heat exhaustion during high 
high temperatures. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, hot, and humid, with widely scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms becoming fair and warm with an isolated shower or thunderstorms tonight. Gusty winds and higher seas are expected in showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeasterly at 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be mostly sunny, hot, and breezy, with a passing shower becoming fair and warm, breezy with a slight chance of a shower tonight. Small craft caution continues in the central and southeast Bahamas. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots, seas 4 to 6 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees, a heat index of 104, and an overnight low temperature of 77. The sun will set this afternoon at 758 and will rise tomorrow morning at 632. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.